Do you have a picky toddler eater? Do you have a child who is so unpredictable you don't have any idea what to give them to eat for mealtime or snack time? Are you dealing with temper tantrums and dramatic meltdowns at the table? I'm Jill Castle. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm talking about the picky eater toddler and how to use the praise method to survive it and to help your child. If today's the first time you've found my show, I encourage you to soak up everything you're gonna hear today and subscribe to the channel. Today we're talking about picky toddler eaters and what I call the praise method. And this is really just a mindset for you, some strategy, strategic tips for how to deal with a picky toddler eater. So the praise method for those picky eater toddlers P is for patience, R is for your reactions, A is for autonomy, I is for interference, S is for structure, and E is for your expectations. So P stands for patience. And the reason I use the word patience, it's because picky toddler eaters can be very trying and frustrating to their parents. So just so you know, the picky toddler or the picky eating phase begins at around age two and can really last until around age six. There are some children that last longer beyond six years of age and we tend to look at them and try to find out if they're more extreme in their picky eating. But for the purposes of today, we're gonna to talk about that typical developmental, uh, stage of picky eating between ages two and ages six. So that's four years. That's why I say patience, mama, because that's a long time that your child can be picky. Now, some children move through this phase very quickly. They might have a picky phase for three to six months and others might be in it for the full four years. Uh, so again, patience is very much a critical component of success in this area because if you're frustrated, you get angry, um, you are embattled with your child and you're having power struggles, it's more likely that this picky eating phase will last longer than it needs to. Which leads me to R. R is for reactions. Specifically, your reactions to your child's picky eating. So you want to remain as neutral as possible because Listen, it's real. When kids come to the table, you've put all this effort into making a meal or a snack for your toddler and they come to the table and throw it off the tray or refuse to eat it or have a temper tantrum meltdown because it's not what they want to eat or not what they like to eat. You can get very frustrated and it can be written all over your face. Like, so, we want to keep our face very placid, very neutral, non-reactive, because believe it or not, toddlers will watch your reaction and that can give them the gas to keep going. So we don't want to react uh, to our kids. We don't wanna show our frustration. We don't wanna show our anger. We don't even wanna show our entertainment if we think our kid is funny. We wanna kind of keep ourselves laughing on the inside, anger on the inside. Don't let your child see you sweat. A is for autonomy. So what does this mean with the toddler? It means that your toddler needs to have some independence. It means that you don't need to feed your toddler anymore. You need to let him feed himself. That is what allowing your child more independence, more autonomy is all about. So there are a couple of things. Number one, let your toddler feed himself. Yes, I know that can get messy. Yes, I know things can spill or fall off the tray, but it's really important for your toddler to start to develop the skills of feeding himself with utensils. So allowing your child some autonomy means that you might offer two items for, for your child to choose from. It might be, hey buddy, do you want crackers today? Or would you like to have some toast? Or I've got yogurt. Would you like strawberry yogurt or blueberry yogurt? or I have berries. I've got strawberries or blueberries. So you're giving two choices and you're letting your toddler pick. That builds autonomy. That really feeds into their desire to be independent 
and you can have a much more successful interaction with your toddler when you're allowing some of this autonomy. The other thing I would say is like, allow your child to refuse to eat. If he does not want to eat, believe me, you don't want to get into the business of forcing your child to eat. Let your child not eat. That's okay. Just act nonchalant and be like, okay, it doesn't seem like you're hungry at this meal. We'll have snack time in a couple of hours. Let's get down and go play. So don't create a big ordeal around your child if he's refusing to eat. Take it in stride, clean up the mess, and move on. You can always have another meal or a snack next. I is for interference. So that basically means don't interfere when your toddler's eating. Don't wipe his face. Don't ask him to take another bite. Don't beg your child to eat or worse, force feed him. Just don't interfere in the experience of eating. Unless your toddler needs help and shows you that he needs help, try to be hands off while your toddler's eating and let him figure it out for himself. S is for structure. So that really means what time are you serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner? What time are you serving his three snacks for the day? Try to be on time. Try to be predictable. Try to be consistent. Where are you serving your meals and snacks? Is it in the same location in the same chair? Toddlers love routine and they love it to be predictable. It builds security for them. And if your child is feeling secure, meal time or snack time will be a lot smoother. Last, no distractions. Uh, we really want our kids eating food and paying attention to it and starting to build the connection between what it feels like in their belly to feel satisfied and the desire to stop eating. And so if our children are eating and they're distracted with TV or toys or reading books or playing on game, then that can really disturb that your child's uh, appetite cues and what that all means in terms of their eating. So again, structure with timing of meals and snacks, no distractions with eating, and pick out a regular place where your child can eat his meals and snacks every day at pretty much the same place. Obviously, if you go to the park one day, you happen to be in the car another day, no big deal. But in the totality of feeding your toddler, try to keep things predictable and in the same routine. Last is E. E is for expectations. And I want you to keep your expectations in a realistic place. So with that toddler picky eater, they are more likely to go on a food jag for one. A food jag is when they want the same food over and over and over again. When my daughter was a toddler, she wanted hot dogs. Yep, we did it. Um, <laughs> the other thing is food refusal. So a lot of times toddlers will stop eating the foods that they loved when they were babies. This is very common. Third, food neophobia. Neophobia is a fancy word for fear of new food. So it is very common for toddlers to be hesitant to try foods that they are not familiar with, that they've never seen before. Uh, most, many toddlers will refuse to try those foods and they need a little period of warm up time, meaning they need to see it a few times. They need to touch it. They need to smell it. They need to play with it. Uh, before they warm up and actually put it in their mouths. So just remember, food jags, food refusal, and food neophobia are to be expected. So keep your expectations in place. Let's review that again. So the praise method for those picky eater toddlers. P is for patience. R is for your reactions. A is for autonomy. I is for interference. S is for structure and E is for your expectations. Keep those, keep that acronym in mind, keep those uh, letters and what they stand for in mind. I'll outline them in the description below if you need to ref reference them. Remember, using this method, using this approach will just keep you calmer and hopefully help you sail through picky eating a little faster and a little less frustrated. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about feeding picky eater toddlers, and I'll be sure to 
answer them for you. If you want to learn more about picky eating, be sure to subscribe to this channel and get my free download in the description below. It talks about how to nourish a child, going through all the different steps, and we'll have more information about picky eating coming up soon. So I hope to see you then.